Greetings, this is Sister Rebecca, a.k.a. Holly Hood, and today in Secrets of Illuminati Part 8, I'm going to show you exactly what this New World Order is and what it has in store for us. But first, let's go back into time. Now the Lord God created a garden. It was the Garden of Eden, and in the middle of this garden, there was a tree. Jehovah Elohim planted the garden in Eden in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Genesis 2.8 Notice that our Father planted the garden, not us. All was good. The garden is a parable. Altruism, right action, chastity, humility, love, happiness for others, temperance. Man lived in a condition, and the river of life, the Holy Spirit, watered the garden. It was the beginning of civilization. Here, in Babylon, this is the serpent upon the tree of knowledge. Do you know what the tree means? It was a covenant. If thou shalt eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt die. This was the covenant they made with Yahweh. The elites of the New World Order agenda have finally come out and openly admitted their plans for the world. The modern corporate control mass media is being used as a massive vehicle of social engineering to train, condition, and mold this current generation's thinking into the New World Order. As the world becomes more and more unstable, environmentally, economically, politically, and morally, each trial we go through is a test to prepare each soul for the final battle of the great day of God Almighty. This final test on this planet will be either obedience to the word of God or the word of man. Since the recession began, six and a half million Americans have lost their jobs. The unemployment rate is 
South Carolina voted unanimously to ban all homeless people from its downtown business area. Violators will be jailed, but those who wish to comply can stay at a shelter just outside the city limits. The catch is that they have to be among the first 240 to get there and are not permitted to leave the grounds by any means other than the official shuttle booked by appointment. It's estimated that Columbia has over 1,500 homeless citizens. Police have been assigned to patrol both the restricted city region and the road near the shelter to make sure no homeless people are meandering around either. Should the officers not catch all of the individuals violating the new plan, business owners and residents are encouraged to call the new hotline set up by the city. According to the councilman who proposed the plan, the removal of several benches throughout the city is another measure being taken to ensure the homeless don't make themselves comfortable. South Carolina's ACLU legal director is looking into the situation and said that giving the limited options of being jailed or shoveled out of town is an abuse of power. For the past eight years, Dan Duvall has run a sober living center for about 30 homeless people on a 72-acre ranch in California. A 66-year-old man was jailed Monday after being accused of illegally housing homeless people on his ranch in San Luis Obispo. Of strange activity in the area. Whilst police have found no evidence to support such claims, they have suggested that there is a strong possibility they are linked to the disappearances. Yes, we're talking about a different kind of mystery, though. Disappearances that are not caused by predator attacks or criminals hiding out there in the woods or just bad luck. I've instructed the Commissioner of Parks and Recreation to issue regulations that would ban outdoor feeding in all city parks. He was charged with violating Orlando's new city ordinance that bans feeding homeless people gathered in large groups. Like sleeping on a park bench, eating on sidewalks, or congregating in public spaces, all crimes. This would, in effect, criminalize homelessness. The regulations are so out of control that in cities all across the U.S., you now have to think twice before giving a hungry person anything to eat. Um, you said medical transportation? Yeah. What, what organization is this? This is an ambulance company. Yeah, because I've seen some uh, posting. Uh, I've seen a posting somewhere about for homeless people. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, we provide uh, uh, transportation to the children in a sub-degree temperature on a regular basis. You know, you wake up at 311. Oh, okay. Um, where, like, uh, what is, because, like, in, in our area, there's, like, when the shelters come, like, they, they're, like, at full occupancy half the time. Where, where do they take the people from there if they don't have any room in the shelters? Yeah. You're not sure? I'm not sure. Maybe they get different to others, but I'm not sure exactly. Huh. So you guys just basically, you just dispatch them and, huh.
And you have to know there's a few cities that have done this. And, you know, I know they talk about the fact that there's a off-site homeless shelter that they can ship the homeless they arrest to. But, one, they have nowhere near the number of beds that equal the Columbia's homeless population. And, two, it's police guarded. They can't leave without permission. They have to be shuttled to and from on a special shuttle bus. So I'm not sure. Is this a shelter or prison for the homeless? If, you know, at the same time, a lot of cities, you know, we've talked about several cities that have been doing this, you know, cited in the article. You know, cities obviously are looking, you know, looking at their downtown business districts, want to bring in people. But at the same time, let's look at addressing the root cause of homelessness, not criminalizing, you know, the fact that someone you know, just doesn't have a home because they may not have the job, they may not have the money. You know, a lot of other cities are looking at other ways to address homelessness, not, you know, arresting them, shipping them out to someplace in the middle of their own place and putting them in a shelter that may or may not be homeless jail. So, yeah, well, really well it's, 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 it's not addressing the problem. You know, it's, it's just uh, that mentality of locking people up and throwing away the key and trying to just forget about it and not even have to acknowledge or visually see that this problem exists anymore, which you have, you know, I just think it's horrifying.